So let's go over a story, figure out a story today. It's a uh, Monday morning and let's go over some more storytelling. Talk about, you know, where a lot of problems come from in the world. Problems all have roots. They have causes. They certainly have effects. Um, and ultimately, we have a choice in how we want to deal with them. But going back to the roots, um, you know, what happens to people when they're developing the most? When they are children, when they are small children, in their youth, their entire, the entire childhood, being a, an infant, a baby, toddler, child, a, a preteen, a teenager, a young adult. Uh, you know, and then what are we when we get into young adulthood, early adulthood? Be much further away from being a child. Do some people ever get away from it? No matter what age they are, mentally. Problems that happen at the root. Um, parental sabotage. Who are the first and only people around you when you get started? For a lot of people, it's their parents. For some, their, their parents aren't even there from the get-go. Uh, that's unfortunate. For the lucky ones, the blessed ones, um, hopefully they're around someone that is has a good soul, has a spirit and a soul to take care of them and uh, really take care of them treat them as better than as if they were wanted to be treated themselves but uh, what you need is someone with some an enlightened person someone with a lot of awareness to understand what young people are going through from the time they are born and you know for their, their entire life but certainly as a child as an infant as a toddler the developing that they're going through and their ability to trust those around them and their mental capacity to find resources within to calm themselves, to reassure themselves, to have confidence in themselves, to trust in their surroundings, to trust the people around them, to, to love them or even be around them. And they might find out that it's a... Uh, an adult's personal choice not to be around them or they might find out and learn the hard way also that it is an adult not an adult's or a parent's personal choice to not be around them uh, that's a sad thing um, and uh, when children have to process these kind of things it's a, it's a huge failure uh, by all of the adults in general uh, by parents, by it could just be one person involved in a child's life that creates massive sabotage. Um, now I can start with my own childhood. Uh, you know, it's amazing how easy it is for anybody to have a child. It could be from any background, any experience level or lack of experience, people are able physically to have children. And then what are we bringing? What are we doing to somebody or a little soul, spirit, a new human being that we bring into this world? And this person, this human being isn't cared for. You know, there's a lot of deep things going on with how life works and what's been going on for ages and ages in history that that this is that this is a reality, that this is a, a huge likelihood. And that for the majority of new children coming into this world, uh, it's very unfortunate what they go through. And it has a lifelong effect. It has a lot of ripple effects. It affects more and more lives around them the older they get. Some people are very damaged and end up damaging others. Some people are very damaged 
and end up just trying to survive. Others are very damaged and grow up to be leaders. And luckily they take care of others, but they're very few. And um, they're very few. But those that do take care of others and stick around and have been hurt the worst, they are able to understand the best. I don't know, it uh, seems like it would be hard for a human being to understand at a very deep level what others are going through if they have not been through adversity themselves in adulthood and in childhood. You know, it's a weird, uh, it's just a weird thing that comes full circle is, you know, how would we have one taking care of others at, at, a, at a grand level if they hadn't been through it themselves. I find myself to feel like an enlightened person, a very aware person, uh, compassionate. I love my own children. I've got four daughters. They're all young. And I am compassionate for other people, uh, children, even adults. I'm a very nice person, you know, usually smiling and just, uh, offering polite manners and respect to those around me. Um, but why am I like that? And where do I come from personally? Me, my story. Uh, I've been through a lot of adversity. I have been through an adversity, I know, uh, as, as a newborn, as a baby, as a toddler, as a child. You know, as a teenager and um, as a young adult, as a new adult, and, and I'm approaching my mid-30s now, still go through stuff. So I, I've, I've become a very understanding person on a deep level. And now I want to help people rather than be overwhelmed by the problems that I've gone through. <sighs> because of the challenge and test that life is, a big step in getting somewhere is understanding and making a setting in your mind, a mindset that we have to stand up and be here, use our struggles to offer help to each other. And that's what I made a decision to do. Um, I am a man. And naturally as a man, I restrain myself from uh, any violence that can come with being a man. And those are natural parts of many men, uh, but not all, not all the males uh, have that, uh, you know, and that's what's needed in the in the in the light of protection or you know in case uh in the in the jungle out there in the concrete jungle that's out there in the real jungle to survive in some scenarios uh violence and capability of violence is needed but when we are in an environment where Violence is is not an answer to anything um, in daily troubles, uh, daily struggles, daily tortures, mental tortures, you know, uh, mistreatment by other people, watching other people be mistreated. And shit, even on a legal basis, if you are witnessing violence um, for a lot of us men, 
even restraining ourselves from getting involved in something that that doesn't really involve us seeing someone else maybe go through a, a violent event and getting hurt it still has to be a choice to restrain that because of the way that society works it can end up taking your own life away one for the dangers that could be involved but two for uh, the, the legalities um, a man could get in trouble simply for just trying to help and have his own life ruined and his own family ruined and uh so turning towards violence or drugs or quitting depression or self-sabotage is all not an option so it takes uh, courage takes being brave no matter what you've been through at any point in your life to restrain yourself from impulses that may come up to quit um, picking up drugs could be a form of quitting getting violent could be a form of quitting um, all these things have major consequences when we are responsible to others whether you have children or not we are all responsible to each other that is a mindset I believe in should be believed in you should stick around you know if you're going through something that's when you should be careful with your actions and going in an opposite direction withhold from those and then work on positive actions that you can depend on it will not be damaging physical strength daily discipline and your body will be a direct reflection on how your mind is working. So, my own story, my own ego, uh, I grew up a very thin kid, as I said in my previous video. Uh, I had a lot of reasons and, and uh, superficial reasons for wanting to be bigger, thicker, stronger, um, you know, internal reasons or even personal security, insecurity. Um, bodybuilding wanting to look a certain way but with or without food or shelter or even a social connection it's important to dedicate ourselves with a mindset to continue with daily physical adversity for the body meaning exercise a workout um, even if you're not eating to grow and repair and have the fuel needed for, uh, you know, really strong advanced workouts. Uh, if you got nothing, do something. You still got to do something with nothing. Waking up at a certain time doesn't take anything. I mean get up that's it you know get yourself get a hold of an alarm if you don't got one you're sleeping in the bushes somewhere you know get up when you know that sun's coming up set a mental clock work on setting a mental clock to wake up do some push-ups these exercises are what we can depend on push-ups squats burpees crunches if you have an able enough body to do that, if not, you do what you can with what you've got. I see people who are in wheelchairs with bodies that are challenged in their, in their physical functionality that still move and do what they can. And them making that decision is a great example as well to continue moving, get past the ego and the mind that will hold us back and tell us not to do things, tell us to quit in whatever fashion quitting may try and enter the mind or make a mindset and a decision not to quit to be able to handle anything that comes our way keep your self-respect restrain yourself from impulsive behavior and reactions it will choose strength and move forward 
So move forward with this mindset. Continue on with some more stories, experiences, examples, lessons, and uh, the videos to come. We'll see you guys at 2.45 a.m. on my Instagram at High Activity Fitness. John Fordberry, out.